two days ago, and um, they come in and they're shell shocked. There's there's a look to them. It's um, you don't know how long they've been in a refugee camp. You know what the situation is and all that. And there's just um, there's kind of an emptiness behind their eyes, and and they're they don't know exactly what to do. So you you know you shuffle them along. You find friends. Yeah, you take them along. Oh, you speak Swahili, great. You know, help them along here and there. And then there's the day about five weeks down the road where I get the miracle. I look in their eyes and there's a sparkle. And then they start laughing. And you go, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do this for free. <laughs> um, and I want to end with one because um, what this will do as an educator is it will challenge you to figure things out that you did not learn. 11-year-old boy, grew up in a camp in Chad, had never written a number before I started working with him. Never written a number. Could say them in French, up to 20, but had no idea what the correlation was. He's now doing algebra. Um, there, there's, um, you have to think, this is not a, a child that's gone through preschool and then kindergarten and just that, that complete you know, evolution, which we sort of all learn in education, like, well, this is going to happen, and then this will happen next, and this will happen next. No, you end up with a kid who's had interrupted scolarity. Oh, okay, well, you look like maybe, you know, based on your age, you're 14, you should have had that many years of education, and you realize, oh, no, so that there are these gaps. And what do you have to do? You have to think, okay, how am I going to teach this? Because I can't use the regular way, and it stimulates you. And if you want a stimulating job, get this job. So what I say is that find a community, because not every community, I mean, what Catholic Charities is doing in Rockford is huge. There are a lot of communities that don't take refugees. So if it's something you're passionate about, find a community that are taking in a lot of refugees um, and immigrants and get involved, and you will not regret it. I want to say with the Beloit, not with the Beloit, with the Wisconsin too, just to share this, we have so many refugees working actually in your state. I mean, the last uh, year, there are so many, um, you know, let's say maybe 40% of the employed refugees who are in, who work in Wisconsin. So um, it's maybe the one more reason <laughs> to, to help and I hope maybe move them. Okay, I'll, I'll add. Um, it's been said already. Um, know your community. Build relationships. As you build relationships and you know community, it creates trust. And when the time comes, you know how to come together and you know who to call. Um, know each other's resources. Stay connected. Um, and connect with what's passionate for what's your passion because this work is difficult and there will be difficult times. Uh, but if we know what our passion is or where we come from, that will be the fire that will keep um, lit. Is that how you say? Mm -hmm. On. <laughs> that will move you forward even through the difficult times. Um, and if you come to this type of work because justice is your issue, uh, remember that individuals can resist injustice, but it takes a community to do justice. So that's why. Stay connected. Be with others that are like-minded. Um, yeah. And Just God bless a you quick for thing. to be part of this. Uh, also, I wanted to say, especially with the immigration part, but however, educate yourself, educate your community. Uh, that's, uh, that will really play. Uh, you teach one person, one person teach the other, so even one person affected, it's a person, it's a life. But also, please, if you have anybody and you know who is seeking for immigration help, there are so many, um, even the organizations, um, but so many notarios and who are not qualified really to provide immigration work. We have a people going to the people's homes to do. That can hurt that person, but uh, immigration is very complex. So please, you know, as you have a word, as you get in the contact, please do not let anybody uh, educate them not to go to accept to attorney or BIA accredited organizations. I'd just, I just like to I'm say, sorry. oh, go ahead, Christina. Along those same lines, it's um, my experience has been too that there's taxpayers or tax 
preparers that are doing those uh, applications, and that's really a no-no. Um, I get a lot of clients, you know, we're not attorneys, we're not BIA accredited, we're advocacy for, for immigration. So we use our resources, we use our attorneys, we make all the referrals, but it's, it's complicated, and if somebody misleads you and misguides you and gives uh, or fills out that application incorrectly, that, that's your life, that's their lives. We don't want to mislead anybody, so um, we really advise against that. <laughs> We have uh, some organizations, community out outreach or whatever, going from home to home to refugees and filling out this application. They are not accredited and it can really hurt because uh, they are not trained. And you think, oh, it's okay, easy. Did you receive the public benefits? Have you done this? Have you done that? But you really need to know history of the country as well to know where, example, the male had to go to the army. They had to. They had to learn how to get the, because it was mandatory. But no, 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 no. That's fine, and that can hurt down in the road because we are seeing even the citizenships not be granted because they pull the applications for the green card, even for the refugees. I mean, I'm talking right now about the refugees, but they did not disclose some things when they filed applications for a green card, so they are not. Um, they mislead the authorities. So. Um, I'd like to thank all four of you for coming today and sharing your expertise and wisdom and passion uh, for helping refugees and immigrants in our community. Uh, so please join me in thanking the panel. That concludes the panel. If you've got individual questions, come on down. They'll be, uh, the panelists will be here for just uh, five, or, five or 10 minutes or so. Thank you so much.